So we're just thankful to be here. You know, every morning, I just, the scripture that goes through my mind is, thank you, Lord, that your mercies are new every morning and great is your faithfulness. Just the fact that we're here this morning is testimony to that. And like Russell says, it, it has been a week and quite frankly, a year like no other. Nobody goes to college and gets a degree on how to lead and navigate a year like we've had. But I think we would all agree that, that none of the violence and the destructive behavior that we've seen this past year and again this week has been okay. None of the lives lost, somebody's son or daughter, mother, father, husband or wife, none of that's been okay. And it has been shocking and it has been extremely painful. It has been a time of some great losses. And, and many are asking questions, as are we. But this morning, rather than focusing on what I don't know, and there's a lot that we don't know, I wanted to take a few minutes and share with you what I do know, and really just share some of my thoughts with you that I've been processing. These are the things that I believe with all my heart to be true. And then I want to share with you what I believe the Lord is saying, continually saying over our nation, the United States. I do know that our God is faithful and kind and good. I do know that his plans for your life and mine remain good. I also know today that we as a nation are bruised and we need healing. We need unity where there's been disunity. And that does not mean that we're gonna agree on everything. We need peace where there's been fear and unrest. And the peace that passes all understanding is available to us. We need justice where there's been injustice. And we need a, a church, capital C, global church, that will stand strong and keep her eyes on the King of Kings, the Alpha and Omega, the one who was and who is and who is to come. 1 Samuel 2.2, 2, there is no one holy like the Lord. There is no one besides you. There is no rock like our God. And that is the truth. There is no one like our God. He is the one who holds the nations in the palm of his hands. And he is the one who holds our nation in his hands. Just as we as, as people do not want to be defined by our worst moments, we've all had our worst moments, our bad moments. I don't want to be defined by my worst moment. And I, don't, I do not believe that the heinous acts that we've seen and the, and the losses that we've experienced and just the, just the tragedies that we've, we've been wit, um, witnessed, I do not believe that those things define who America is. This is what I believe the Lord says over us. And this is how he defines us. And this is what I will continue to pray and declare, and I hope you will join me over this nation. This nation that the Lord called us to 21 years ago, he called us here to make our home and to build this church. This is what the Lord says. The Lord says this is a nation dear to his heart. We can agree on that. America, you remain a prize to be won, and you will be won by those who seek my face, who seek justice and righteousness. Your times are in my hands. Do not look around you in terror. The Lord says, I am the lion of the tribe of Judah, and I have positioned myself at the gates of this nation, and there remains a roar for justice over you, America. We are gonna be part of one of the greatest revivals in history because as the body of Christ, as those who are filled with the spirit of the living God, we, all of us, we get to go out and we get to preach the gospel and we get to tell people who are hurting that Jesus loves them and that they have a hope and a future because he is the God who never changes. 
And like never before, we need to be the church. Because we are the ones who are anointed with the Spirit of God to proclaim the good news to the brokenhearted. Each and every one of us sitting here today has an assignment to tell a hurting world, a confused world, that Jesus loves them and he has a hope and a future for them. And as a church, we are going to do what 1 Peter 1.22 says. We are going to love one another deeply from the heart. We are going to value unity above agreement and we are going to continue to pray for this great nation dear to his heart. In closing, I was reminded of a word that the Lord gave at the beginning of 2020 before we knew what was coming. And the word was that there were people who felt like they could hardly breathe and they were under tremendous pressure. And this morning the Lord reminded me of that word again. Daniel 10, 17 says, how can I, your servant, talk with you, my Lord? My strength is gone and I can hardly breathe. Again, the one who looked like a man touched me and gave me strength. Do not be afraid, you who are highly esteemed. He said, peace, be strong now, be strong. And when he spoke to me, I was strengthened and said, speak, my Lord, since you have given me strength. And I believe one of the things the Lord wants to do this morning, I feel like there's an invitation to take a deep breath of Holy Spirit presence, to take a deep breath of the love and the faithfulness of who our God is and to breathe again because we all, we all need to take that, that deep breath. I feel like there's an invitation for that, that we as a church are gonna take a deep breath and we're gonna breathe in his faithfulness and his healing and his love so that we can go out and be the church. Thank you. Yeah. What a year of challenge this past year has been. And we've had a pandemic, which to date has claimed 375,000 American lives. Uh, we've had political upheaval and partisanship at, at its divisive worst. We've had conversations, riots, and demonstrations over racial equality. We've had economic bruising and loss of business and income. We've had a year of many firsts. Now, along with this, this past Wednesday, uh, many Americans found great grief in uh, not the least of five people losing their lives at the Capitol. It was a day of heartbreak and tears. Uh, one of many that we've experienced in the past month. We've grieved more and prayed more over this nation in this past year than any other year that we've been here. It's not just a nation dear to the heart of God, it's near, to, near and dear to our hearts. Those of us who were born here, that's a wonderful privilege for those of us who came here. It cost us 10 years and $10,000 for our family to become American citizens. We treasure that. But the question is, how should we respond right now as believers? To whom should we be listening? Is it to the political party propaganda? Is it to news media outlets? Is it to social media packages, to eloquent spiritual leaders we have no relationship with? To our own common sense? I'd like to suggest a few guiding principles for these times. While we celebrate our American citizenship and we prize uh, all the rights and responsibilities we have, we value and prize our heavenly citizenship far more. Philippians 3.20 says, Paul said, our citizenship is in heaven. And at some stage we have to settle that in our own hearts as well. Proud to be an American but more proud to be a citizen of heaven. In Hebrews 11, the Bible says we should be like Abraham who lived like a foreigner in a strange land and who looked forward to a city whose foundations were built and, and, and whose buildings were built by God. Peter says, live your lives here as strangers in reverent fear. There is an element here where we can celebrate and be engaged and, and engage in this republic with all the rights and the responsibilities that are ours, but far more important is our responsibility to engage with heaven. 
I'm not surprised when unbelievers do foolish things. That, that's, that's regretful, but it's not surprising to me. What is surprising to me is when people who are citizens of heaven act like they're citizens of the earth. We have all the rights and privileges of Americans, but we submit first to the higher call of the rights and responsibilities of heaven. We need to lift our eyes higher and refix them on Jesus. So I say engage with great passion in all your rights in this republic, all the while remembering that you represent Jesus on this earth. His great love for mankind, His faithfulness, His kindness, His patience, His gentleness, His word. These are the primary guiding principles for our life and conduct. Follow His example in not reviling those who persecute you. By loving the ignorant, by serving those who don't yet understand, by just being of your Father who is in heaven. Mocking and belittling of others, sharing snide remarks, walking arrogantly, acting with violence or theft or anarchy is not the spirit that we were called to exhibit. We say, but I've heard from God. You are no more, you are the most responsible when you claim to have heard from God to represent Him well. In Luke 9, 54, Jesus is going to Jerusalem because he's about to sacrifice his life. And on the way, he stops at a Samaritan village to get some supplies. And James and John go in, according to Jesus' word, to ask them. And they, because they hear he's going on to Jerusalem and because they don't like the Jews, they said, no, we're not gonna help you. And James and John are so incensed by this. They said to Jesus, should we call down fire from heaven and consume this village like Elijah did? And Jesus rebuked them and said, you don't understand which spirit you're of. but there's precedent, there's biblical precedent. Elijah did it. Yeah, but Jesus says, you don't understand the spirit that you're supposed to be functioning in. So treasure your convictions deeply. You don't have to throw any of them aside, but you do have to let love and humility and devotion to Jesus be the fragrance that people experience from your life. And if you have to rebuke something, Please let it be through tears. Paul said, I now say again, even with tears, many live as enemies of the cross of Jesus Christ. And then he turned around and he said, but our citizenship is in heaven and we eagerly await our savior from there. You're not of the spirit that wants to curse and call down fire. Being right is no justification to being ungodly. Can I suggest to our members that you please don't use social media to rebuke others or to further malice? I get it when unbelievers do that. I don't get it when we're doing it. Our job is to pray for our country that we love. This is our chance. This is our opportunity. This is our responsibility as believing Americans to call down the grace and the favor and the blessing and the peace of God on our nation. I know Jesus is praying for peace. I know He's calling on His Father for the smile and the blessing and the favor of God. And God has promised these to our nation. God has not changed his word is still absolute. His promises still remain. His love is undiminished. His help is ever present. His intent cannot be thwarted. And we, are, of all people, are the people who are convinced that God is able and has the power to do everything that He's promised. The fate of this nation rests in the hands of people like you. I'd love us to pray together for our nation. I wonder if you'd stand with me, please. Let's, let's make a holy moment of this as the church of Jesus Christ comes to pray and ask our Father for His favor. Father, we want to come before You and just say, we so, so rejoice, Father, 
in our citizenship in heaven. That we have been called by your name, Lord. That you have given us the authority of heaven to lock and unlock, to bind and to loose. And so, Father, we, we, we stand with the, the rest of the church and the nation and we lift up a chorus of prayer to say, Father, would you be kind to our nation? Would you be gracious to us? Would you forgive us, Lord? Would you turn the heart of the nation back to the Lord Jesus Christ? Would you remove idols from our lives? Would you break, Lord, injustice wherever it has been found in our nation? Would you turn again, Lord, the heart of this nation back to the, to the Lordship of Jesus Christ? Father, we call out on you, in, in, your, in your name and we're praying, Lord, for a move of God. Send, Lord, another great awakening upon this nation. Let the Spirit of God move upon this nation, we cry. And Father, for our responsibility to tear down and to hurt other people, and when we've, we've done things, Lord, have not brought honor to your name, we're asking for your forgiveness. And today, Lord, we choose to come under the Lordship of Jesus, under the citizenship of heaven. For our citizenship is in heaven and we eagerly await you from there, Lord Jesus. And I pray, Lord, that you would begin to pour out your love and your wisdom and your graciousness and your humility and your kindness and your gentleness through us. Bring glory to your name through your church in this nation, in Jesus' name, and give us peace. And all God's people said, amen, amen and amen. Thank you.